the mountains to move. Mr. Powell, Mr. Martin, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to welcome you, my residents, the residents of the Slovak ambassador today. In defining moments, it is crucial to stand on the right side of history. Today, we came together to commemorate personalities who made the right choice in those moments and those personalities who met, whose memory is preserved for the next generations. In early 1940s, when the former Czechoslovakia was under brutal Nazi occupation and the puppet fascist regime was installed, only a few hoped for another future guided by values of freedom and democracy. And even less were willing or able to take active measures to fight. Kubish and Gabčík were among those few, happy few Bando brothers. Thanks to their courage and sacrifice, then Czechoslovakia was on the right side of history, on the side with democratic and freedom-loving nations, not only in Central Europe, but on the whole continent. In that historical moment, the free Czechoslovakia and the United Kingdom were fighting together, side by side, as allies and friends. Today, our countries, the United Kingdom, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, are friends and allies in NATO. We stand shoulder to shoulder against the new tyranny of war in Europe, against Russian aggression in Ukraine, a nation which decided to be free and independent, as we did in 1940s. Today, we can build on a legacy of heroes who pay the highest price for our freedom. And this would not be possible without people who are keeping their legacy alive. It is my duty as an ambassador, but even more, my utmost pleasure to underline the efforts made by our very special guest, Marcus of Chomley, whose family history of 20th century is interlinked with free Czechoslovak soldiers in the United Kingdom by providing shelter and unimaginable support for over 5,000 freedom-loving warriors, Czechoslovak warriors, and who holds the annual commemoration of this fantastic part of the history. It is important to know that Kubish and Gabči were also part of the Czechoslovak military community there. Georgian Pavel, whose association organization plays an absolutely crucial role in strengthening public memory and perception about free Czechoslovak soldiers and veterans. John Martin, who made a tremendous work by collecting, synthesizing and analyzing historical sources and publishing a great book about Operation Anthropoid. I am delighted that we are having opportunity to welcome you here at my residence today. Before we proceed to the official decoration, I would like to express my personal gratitude for your dedicated work, efforts, time and energy invested for the good. It helps to understand this very important part of our common history and strengthens the basis of our alliance and friendship built on values of freedom and democracy. Thank you. The decree of the Minister of Defence of the Slovak Republic in accordance with the decree of the Minister of Defence of the Slovak Republic number 18 is David George Philip Chomley, 7th Marquis of Chomley, awarded by decoration commemorative medal of the Minister of Defence of the Slovak Republic, first grade gold, for extraordinary commitment, significant personal contribution to the preservation of the memory of uh, Czechoslovak soldiers who served in the Czechoslovak army in Great Britain during the Second World War and for merit um, in the development of bilateral relations, cooperation and friendship between the Slovak Republic and the United Kingdom, signed by the Minister of Defense of the Slovak Republic, Jaroslav Nať. Thank you. Thank you for this 
wonderful award and, and thank you, Your Excellency, for inviting me this morning. Really, it's a great honour. Um, I believe um, Chumley Park, where I live and, and, and was brought up, will always be linked to the memory of the Czechoslovak forces who were stationed there during the war, as well as my family and the community who welcomed them. I hope you'll forgive me if I give a few historical details that some of you will already know. Um, soldiers and airmen who had managed to escape um, the Nazi invasion found their way to France, mostly, where a Czechoslovak legion was formed to fight alongside the Western Allies with trained airmen joining the French Air Force. When most of France fell to the German advance and the Allies were pushed back from the Marne, the Czechoslovak legionnaires retreated to the Mediterranean ports where they were evacuated by British merchant vessels under the command of the Royal Navy. There would have been some urgency to find a suitable base for when the legionnaires arrived in England. And I now believe it was my grandparents who offered the park at Chumley as their camp. They were friends with Jan Masaryk, who of course had been Czechoslovak ambassador before the war then became foreign minister of the government in exile. My grandmother, Sybil Chumney, came from a political family. Her brother, Sir Philip Sassoon, had been minister for air during most of the 1930s and did much to increase spending and building uh, more aircraft and airfields. He was very close to Churchill especially and, and um, for rearmament and against appeasement. And Jan Masaryk had been a frequent guest at his lunches and house parties at Trent Park in Enfield. Philip died in 1939, and when war was declared, my grandmother became one of five superintendents in the Women's Royal Naval Service, known as the REMS, which she had helped to found during the First World War. My grandmother kept in touch with Masaryk, and their friendship endured until his untimely death at the hands of the communists. I believe that's the case. Um, around 3,000 legionnaires arrived at Chumley in early July 1940, and President Benes came to address the troops on the 26th of July. They had reorganized to form the 1st Czechoslovak Mixed Brigade, as well as three air squadrons, who went on to fight at the Battle of Britain and continued in various roles throughout the war. The infantry brigade carried out much essential work on the home front, before joining with the Czechoslovak force that had been fighting in Tobruk. I believe they converted to an armoured brigade before preparing for the Normandy landings in June 1944. The brigade went on to distinguish themselves by forcing the surrender of a German garrison at Dunkirk. Many had meanwhile volunteered for special operations, which Operation Anthropoid was of course the most famous. In the park at Chumley, there is a stone carved by the renowned sculptor Franta Belsky, which was unveiled by Jan Masaryk on 28th of September 1940. My uncle John Chumley was in attendance, and my grandfather, who was serving in the London Fire Service, sent a message which John read out. I, or those who come after me, shall once a year lay flowers at this memorial which you shall leave behind you here the monument that is commemorating courageous people who have suffered so greatly. I hope those who are able to come up to Cheshire on the 9th of July for our memorial commemorations will see this stone and know that my family and the community at Chumley, as well as the families of your veterans, will continue to honour the memory of the brave, che brave Czechoslovak forces, many of whom lost their lives in the struggle to defeat the Nazis. By the time you come up, there should also be a plaque next to the castle commemorating the two heroes of Operation Anthropoid. Thank you very much. The decree of the Minister of Defence of the Slovak Republic in accordance with the decree of the Minister of Defence of the Slovak Republic number 19 are Georgina Pavel and John Martin, awarded by decoration commemorative medal no, on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the Slovak National Uprising and the end of the Second World War. 
for significant personal contribution to the per, uh, preservation of the memory of Czechoslovak soldiers who served in the Czechoslovak army in the Great Britain during the Second World War and for merits in the cooperation and friendship between the Slovak Republic and the King, United Kingdom, signed by the Minister of Defense of the Slovak Republic, Jaroslav Nač. belongs to Mr. John Martin, uh, author of the book The Miracle of uh, the Sun. Uh, Your Excellency, my Lord, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's terrific to be here, so humble to receive this award, of course. Um, we all know it's a special day, it's the 80th anniversary of Operation Anthropoid, uh, these incredible, incredible, brave, soldiers who put everything on the line and also the civilians in Prague and other places that help these soldiers we must remember them as well uh, I always say in the lectures that I give about Operation Anthropoid yes the soldiers were were there they were fighting but to me even the civilians who maybe supplied a packet of sausages to feed the men or hid the men or a piece of clothing the men could wear. To me, they were also fighters as well. So we all also have to remember this complete sacrifice and patriotism of all these people who were involved in this incredible, heroic mission of Operation Anthropoid. I wrote, I wrote a little book, little book, um, early 2008. And I thought I was the only one who was interested in Operation Anthropoid. I'd been fascinated by it since I was a kid. When I was at school, I remember saying to the teacher, my ambition was to see a bend in the road in Czechoslovakia. And of course, Czechoslovakia then was like, it was almost like trying to go to the moon. You couldn't get to Czechoslovakia. <clears throat> but I always had that, this ambition. And when I wrote my little book, and it went on the internet and this kind of thing. I found a whole community of people who were absolutely like me, so passionate about this story and about the history and about the bravery, a whole community. And of course, since then I've become great friends with the families who've taken part. Uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, his Lordship, our class as a friend, we've met. Um, and here we are at the Slovak Embassy, at the Slovak residence of the Embassy. And we have to remember, um, they were Czech, Czech and Slovak soldiers who took part in Anthropoid. Incredible, incredible, incredible from the Czech side. But it always seems to get a little bit forgotten. But Joseph Gabčík, the leader of Operation Anthropoid, was a Slovak. And I've had great, great friends uh, involved in the, the, your, pre, your predecessor was a dear friend of mine, still is. And I've become great friends with Gabčík's family. And I had the honour, the honour on a couple of occasions of actually sleeping in his house and sleeping in Joseph Gabčík's uh, own bedroom where he used to sleep. Um, many of you will know I became uh, friendly with various pe people, but when the soldiers were based at Chumley Castle, they got friendly with a family called the Ellison family. And I'm sure many of you will know the story of the Ellison family. The Ellison family had two teenage daughters at home. Um, and I'd just like to read you a little piece from my book that Lorna Ellison, one of these teenage daughters who became a friend of Gabčík and Kubish. Just a little couple of excerpts about how she met Gabčík and Kubish. 
Lorna told me, she said, all this, this special friendship with Jan and Joseph was so special. They met when Jan Kubisch was sat on a wall near Chumley Castle and they just went past on a bus and got talking to Jan Kubisch. And they used to, the Ellison family took these soldiers in and they stayed at the Ellison family house. They stayed in what was the soldiers called the Blue Room. And I said to Lorna, why did they call it the Blue Room? She said, because it was painted blue. <laughs> Simple as that. And these soldiers became great friends. And Lorna told me how they met first. They met Jan and she said, you know, they always slept in the Blue Room. Whenever they were on leave or at weekends, the men would come to stay with us. They were always in uniform and always perfect gentlemen. Jan was the quieter of the two and Joseph was always full of fun and mischief, always telling jokes and making us laugh. He was like a cheeky schoolboy with Joseph Gabji, hardly ever took anything serious. He was always the joker and he was fascinated by a, a nighttime drink that we have in Britain called cocoa. He'd never heard of Coco. So much so, he christened me Coco. That was my nickname from Joseph Gacci. He always, even now, she said, many years later, I always smile to myself whenever I think of Joseph Gacci. He was so full of life. Often the girls went for walks with the soldiers. Jan and Joseph would, would borrow bicycles. They all go for bike rides. And this friendship lasted certainly over 12 months. And that is this friendship that started, to me, that's the, almost the start of the journey. Um, and this friendship and cooperation between our countries has continued and is continuing today. And long may it continue. Uh, I'm surrounded by historians and, and authors here. It's, it's incredible. Um, and I'm so humbled and I do sincerely thank you for this award. But it's not for me, it's for everyone that's gone on the journey with me. Uh, many people have been to Prague and all these places with me. Uh, so on behalf of everyone, uh, Your Excellency, uh, my dear friend, the great defence attaché, we are on first names, he said, no, no, you, you must call me Vladimir. Uh, great friend. So on behalf of everyone in the anthropoid community, uh, I would like to thank you for this award, and it belongs to them as well. So. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be around if anyone has, has any questions or anything like that. But long may this cooperation continue. And um, we are working on a, a new project with His Lordship. And I was delighted to say when he mentioned it then. So fingers crossed that might come to fruition very soon. So watch this space. But thank you, folks. And thank you for your beautiful residence and my friends and many, many friends here. Uh, it's a great day and we're all proud and honoured to be here celebrating, if that's the right word, the 80th anniversary of this incredible action, uh, an incre incredible action brought about by these hugely brave soldiers, but also these civilians who were also involved in Operation Anthropoid. Thank you.